the uh, the walk today around uh, Mount. Start again. How much are going to come in this way? So that's me done from Mount Cook. Welcome back to another video everyone, wherever you are. In the past as a photographer I've missed far too many opportunities because I have not been prepared. This video asks you to take your camera with you when you go for a walk. But remember not all walks have to be photo shoots. And this video records me going for a walk with the camera where I take a few shots. Welcome to Cradle Mountain, Tasmania. So I'm up at um, Dove Lake, up in Cradle Mountain National Park, and I'm currently in the visitor centre just now. I'm just about to take a little walk around Dove Lake, which takes about two to three hours, I think. It's a cloudy day. It's uh, probably 90% cloud cover. There's some blue sky. The sun has been trying to sneak out, so. Um, as you know, I'm not a, a lover of taking uh, photographs when the sun's shining and the, we've got blue sky. So today should be okay. Um, there's certainly a couple of spots in the way here that we might stop uh, past on the way back, but um, it'll all depend on time around the lake here because it's currently half past 11 in the morning and the park closes at four o'clock. Right. It's cold outside, it's probably about four or five degrees, I think, but uh, no time like the present. Now leaving the visitor centre, I was advised to walk around the lake in a clockwise direction. So I clearly took that advice. And not far into the National Park here, you're greeted by some spectacular scenery, large rock faces and a really tall waterfall on the right hand face of the lake. To be in such a magical place with such dramatic scenery, it's overwhelming, but simply beautiful. Now this here is a view of Cradle Mountain in the background, but it's also got a lookout in the foreground. Now I try usually to keep people out of my shots, but I've left them here to illustrate the scale of this place. And one thing on the walk here that caught my eye was these flower pods or seed pods. They're not that pretty to look at, but it was the delicacy of how they floated in the wind here amongst this magical, dramatic location. I'm just going to take a look up to the lookout to see what I can see and probably, <laughs> probably get the camera. So I'm going to take a, a photograph from here of what's quite a dramatic looking um, vista with Cradle Mountain in the background and, and lake in the foreground. But what's of interest here is the way that your eyes see stuff differently to the camera. The camera's going to record this in a very 2D way. But obviously your, um, your eyes see things in a 3D way. And the trick here is going to have to be to separate and pull out all the different lenses and layers. All the layers, I beg your pardon, of the foreground peninsula on the lake. The ridge lines on the mountain that are catching the light and in addition the way that the, the light's actually dancing around the mountain here. Because of the wood here I only have a 45 to 80 mil, 85 mil lens here so I'm gonna have to do a panorama funnily enough and um, I'll probably set this up. I'll have a quick look through the viewfinder uh, just as it is actually. I can get away with this, I think, on a 45 mil, um, on, a, on a landscape frame here. It's actually quite a distance away, which has given me a lot of spread and a lot of XY field to play with. And so possibly can get away with just a two shot horizontal panel. The sky here is quite actually dark and moody um, at the top. But as I say, the trick for this one here it's going to be to replicate what the camera sees the way that my eyes see this because I can see separation between the different layers of data not just the colour change but the three-dimensional aspects so let me set this up so I'm just in here checking the focus 
probably in the ridge line here and that's it in focus now so if I have a little look at the live view I'm introducing some of the foreground here mostly the lake but then we've got the headland that you can't probably make it out very clearly but additionally some ridge lines that run up towards the peak here as well we've got one two different layers on the right hand side and I'm shooting this at let me see I'm going to shoot down to f11 and I'll take this back to probably about an eighth of a second or maybe I should go as wide as I can it's currently on 65 mil because I want to introduce some sky to this and the reason I want to introduce some sky to this as I say the sky is actually quite dark and moody up here so I'm going to take one remembering where my frame is I'll take it just so that the lake's just inside the left hand frame and the peak the peak is just on halfway so let me just take that so there we are at halfway and if I can move this along 50% remember to the left hand frame and that's wide enough that it starts introducing the landfalls on the right hand side here and it's starting to show me that we've got some mood in the sky as well now I'm going to take one more with my hand in front of the frame and I'm just going to raise this up a little bit actually to get more of that dramatic sky so the thing I'm trying to focus on here is the separation of the land masses and also the mood that's in the sky above the mountain 50% And that should be me. I actually wanted to take some uh, a photograph of this, but to be honest, it's so far away, I don't have the right lens with me. So instead of nothing, this is uh, one of the peaks of Cradle Mountain here. And it's just watching the clouds and stuff rolling over the top of this. This is not sped up. This is, um, this is real time. So this here, this is the more famous um, little boat shed at Cradle Mountain and it sits just in a lovely sheltered bay here as you can see by the water. But the water further out here starts becoming a little bit choppier. So it sits on the side of a little pen peninsula here and it's got some lovely colours on it. And way up in the distance it's both sides of Cradle Mountain but I think for the um, taking off this shed we can see here that we've got some lovely light falling on the roof here and just on the side but I think I need to make this side elevation of the shed a little bit shorter and see more of the gable end so what I need to do is go over to the left here which I'll show you here I think I need to climb out in the rocks and stuff out here so that I can sharpen that angle that I'm taking it at so this is probably more the angle that I'll take this from here but it's going to involve me getting in the water with a tripod I think and what I'll probably do 
is to the right hand side of the shed there there's just a light green bush that is on the right side of frame that's actually in the foreground so that should be out of focus and I'll take this all the way around to the left hand side of the mountain here and I'll be able to work out quite quickly how many shots I need to take to get this done once I get the camera set up so my apologies for being out of breath but I've been walking for a couple of hours so that's me got the camera and the base all level and that's actually giving me enough here to to work with and I'm going to shoot this at f16 this is a sixth of a second which still leaves some um, detail in the sky here and I'll shoot it right to left because I'm out of breath taking my 50% so that's two shot horizontal panel now what's interesting here that's still not at the end at the left hand side that I want so probably a good opportunity here to speak about how to work out the width of your panoramas now this camera here has got a 4-3 format which means it's four parts wide three parts tall because I'm on a horizontal here two shot would be half a four again so it's six by the three which is a two to one format so I can afford to go a little bit wider than that because ideally you want to be somewhere in between two and three for a, for a good uh, panorama format photograph so I'm quite happy with that what I'm gonna do though just so I can get some more detail way in the distance I'm gonna put this back up in its portrait and I'm gonna punch in it probably about 80 mil and what that's gonna do is allow me to zoom more in on the detail in the background which will allow me to be more manipulative in post make sure it's on right I don't want to be dropping this in the water so I'll start off on the left this time but what I'll do again hand in front of the lens although this is a different orientation it shouldn't really matter let me shoot this it's quite nice and moody and I'm getting a lot more a lot more uh, detail in there in the sky because I've gone to the yeah and that still allows me to capture that so let's take this shot one 50% Shot two. Fifty percent. Shot three. And shot four. And I just need to go a little bit wider than four here. So I'll take this. It's another fifty percent to give me five. And that takes me roughly back to where I started. So the maths get a little bit harder here so four three format the first shot will be four parts by three the second shot will be four and a half parts wide by four tall because I'm adding on one and a half shots every time at 50 percent three shots will be six by four seven and a half by four nine by four which is about two and a half to one ratio which falls in between that two and three shot ideal composition for a panorama the last thing I'll do this works quite cool it's quite nice the way it is it's showing up big reflections but I might have some problem stitching this so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stick an ND filter on and do the same thing again so this filter here is not my normal 10 stop but a 6 stop and the reason it's a 6 stop that if we've got 1 sixth of a second 
one stop we've got a third half a second let's just call that a half for ease of maths two would be one second three would be two seconds four would be four seconds eight seconds 15 seconds and 15 seconds is probably enough to be trying to smooth this off a little bit so if we're going to go f16 15 seconds if we added another four for a 10 stop filter we would have to go 30 seconds one minute two minute four minute then it's four minute times five shots so it's a 20 minute photograph this part closes at four o'clock so i don't even think i've got time to i don't think i've got time to do that today because we're hopefully going to stop another two stops down the way here that caught my eye in the way up so I'm going to take this out here okay and I'm going to change this to 15 seconds there's 15 seconds some lovely light actually falling on the top of the, the boat shed here so this should take us back with a five shot uh, panel back out to where we started away out here come on <laughs> 15 seconds is a while when you wait on it. There's one and 50% is just on the apex of the roof. And about there. Take the second one. That's shot number three. It's actually really nice. It's just softening off some of the clouds which are actually moving quite quickly. And four. Second last one. And that takes us a little bit past where we need it to finish off. So it'll be just under five to one, uh, five shot, uh, two and a half to one ratio. But what's really nice here again, there's some moving light in the, in the landscape here, the ridge line that runs up from bottom left to top right. That's catching light on the top. We've got a further ridge behind that. So we need to be able to se separate that in post, which is what my eyes are seeing today. We've got some lovely light as well on the strations up on top of the mountain, away up here. Um, and again, these are the things that I need to try and pick out because I don't think the sensor will pick them out without manipulation. So what the camera is seeing is this. Maybe best actually if I show you the shots that I've just taken and if we run through these five shots so that's the first one there the second the third the fourth and the fifth and as I say the um, stuff that's really nice is the light on top of the shed the light that's caught on top of the the sort of light orangey green stuff just behind the, the camera there which I'll show you here so this landscape that's just behind the shed here is the stuff that's catching the the light really nicely just on the top I'm trying to get my finger in here just on the top here and that follows itself all the way down to the water and then as we go left here that next line of landscape that we're seeing there can't see it on this camera but I can see it on my I can see it with my eyes that um, the top of that there is catching some light all the way up and just that part there in the middle of the screen is also catching some light which I need to make sure that I manipulate that back into the photograph in post so that's me back just from the walk around the lake that you can see here behind me and just about to jump on a shuttle bus to take me back to the visitor centre but on the way up there was um, Two spots that caught my eye actually. One was a tiny little waterfall to 
to continue the theme from the last video. And also another view of the mountain way in the distance with some lovely browns and oranges in the foreground, quite like Scotland actually. So I'll check these in the bus as we go back down. And I think between the two shots, or the two locations, we'll get at least one shot. So I'm nearly done, but I'm not quite finished yet for today. So lovely walk that, Cradle Mountain, Tasmania. Well worth a visit and some spectacular dramatic scenery that you would, I don't know, associate with Argentina, Italy and the Dolomites, New Zealand, South Island and probably Scotland as well. Lovely. So I'm just going to set up here. I've just had my nuts chewed off by a bus driver telling me it's a heritage area and I shouldn't be in the bush, which I understand. Didn't realise. So I'm going to shoot this at the high end, at 85 mil, I think. And I'm going to shoot this probably on a portrait orientation. And by shooting this at an ori a portrait orientation, I can then get two shots side by side and focus in on the mountains way in the distance here. So that you can see the camera, I'm just going to set up to the side here. And again, the... Um, The sky is really quite moody and dramatic here, despite the despite the um, the lovely warm colour that I'm getting. So let me just get this level, and I'm going to just tip it back a little bit. We've got some grasses in the foreground here. which will just add some out of focus interest, I think. So I'm going to take this, we're at uh, one sixth of a second at F16. So it's time for me to come clean here. I'm having problems with a data card and the data card is only recording a four bit 21 megapixel image here, which doesn't allow me to extract the data and the dynamic range from this scene. I was going to set up with my border on the right hand side, just at the line and the other margin behind my head. But the thing that's catching my eye here is the way that the light is catching the top hill, top of the hills here. The big one across the middle of the screen and then some converging lines towards the right. They're leading my eye over to the lines in the opposite direction up to the top right corner of the frame here. But also I've got the five trees which are catching strong light from above. And this is me still going through the process of trying to record this, but it's only now that I've got the card back into the post-processing suite that makes me realise I can't do this. Now this is me struggling with the card here on camera, and most people would cut this from their video, but I've kept this here because I think it's important that doing vlogs, A, they're not easy and they're not always perfect. And this is just an illustration of the problems that you have on location when on a photo shoot or out for a walk. Yeah, I think that's pretty much me actually. Be interesting to see how this one works in post, but again, making sure that I get the light browns in here, the mid browns, the greens, the trees that are catching the light, and then make sure that I don't bleach out the sky and ensure that that's dark and moody as it's showing itself me to be here just now. I'm gonna get packed up, here comes the bus driver again. A lovely spot, and well worth a revisit. So this will be the last shot from Cradle Mountain, and this is the little waterfall that I told you about. I'm not going to get the tripod out, I'm just going to do this, not handheld, but I'm going to use the railing here as my tripod. So I'm going to 
take it to about almost half of a second, maybe a third of a second, at about F11. I'm going to take a quick test shot. <laughs> it's all wobbly, but I might get away with this actually. And I'll take this in a portrait orientation and a two shot panel again to get that close to one by one format square. I'll try this. So this is taking the first one. I've already done my focus. Sharpest attack. <laughs> and 50%. But what I'm going to do again, heard the shot yesterday or the last video. I put my hand in front of the frame. And I'm going to make this darker. So I'll move my F stop up to about F16. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit to about 85 mil. And I'm ready to take this. Let me try something, hang on. Let me try something. I'm gonna take this to 0.6 of one second. At F22. It's a little bit high. So see if we can, 0.6 of one second. Surface attack. 50%. <laughs> I'll see if that works. That's probably all from uh, Mount Cradle Mountain National Park. See how that looks. That should be okay. So that's me done from Cradle Mountain National Park and also Tasmania. And the last several days have been awesome actually. Really, really nice, seen some lovely stuff. And that walk there today at Cradle Mountain, simply astounding place to go. Um, national, international heritage site, um, protected area, just stunning. And um, the purpose of today's video was just about going out for a walk with the camera and recording what you see. Because I think the most important part about being a photographer is taking photographs. And that's the true, that's true for everyone. So, until next time, um, get out for a walk, take the camera, and we will see you very soon. Until then, cheerio. Thanks for watching everyone, wherever you are.